All right, let's start with the picture. So here's a binary search tree. Um, this is a very common application of using binary trees. The binary search tree is very specific in terms of how the data in the tree is stored, enabling us to search to see if certain values are in the tree very efficiently. Assuming the tree is balanced, we'll talk more about that later. Um, you may remember when we did the set, you could have created a tree set class. Basically what we're writing today is the tree set class. Um, and so just to kind of walk through this with this example that we've been using, if we look at the root of the tree, the root of the tree is, is Juliet. What that means is that every node in the all the left descendants are going to be less than Juliet. That means in terms of their implementation of the compare to method of the comparable interface, they come before Juliet. So for example, Eve comes before Juliet, so therefore Eve is in the left, is one of the left descendants. Adam and Harry also come before Juliet, so all three of these are in the left subtree. In the right subtree, all the nodes will be greater than Juliet. That's why Romeo and Tom are over here. And this, it's not just with the root, it, it keeps going. So if we look at Eve, everything in all the left descendants of Eve come before Eve, like Adam, and all the right descendants of Eve come after Eve, like Harry. Um, and same thing here with Romeo. There are no left descendants, so there's nothing there that comes before Romeo, but there is a right descendant, Tom, and Tom does in fact come after Romeo. Okay. This is not the only way we could build this particular binary search tree. Right, um, we we could certainly move or we could rearrange these nodes and still preserve the rule that all the left descendants come before the node, and all the right descendants come after a given node. Um, but that's what makes a binary search tree a binary search tree. So I think you can see here because of this, it's going to be very quick to traverse this tree and determine if what we're looking for is in the tree or not, which is the behavior of a set. So let's write some code together, and we're going to kind of write the code together in pieces and then keep looking at pictures to help us understand the code that we're writing together. So to start with, um, there is one instance variable in our binary search tree, which is a reference to the node that is the root, just like there was in the binary tree that we, we previously wrote. So let's go down and actually write part of the node class. It's going to be very similar to the node class that we wrote for our binary tree with one important difference. Um, for the binary tree, we just said that we had the data was of type object because we weren't going to do anything as a generic. Um, and basically that way we could, our data could be strings or turtles or whatever we want. That won't work anymore because in order for us to do the binary search tree, we need to be able to compare the data. So the type of all the data has to implement the comparable interface. Okay. So the type of all of the data of the nodes will be comparable, meaning it implements the comparable interface. Other than that, the other instance variables are the same, of reference to the left node, the left child, and a reference to the right child. And I'm going to make this a static class which is what we've been doing right along too. All right, so those are our public instance variables, data left and right, pretty much the same as what we had before with our binary tree, except now that the, t the type of data is comparable. So. All right, let's go back to the top and implement the default constructor. We're told the default constructor constructs an empty tree. What's an empty tree? An empty tree is a tree where the root is null, just like it was for a binary tree. That's not too bad. So there's three operations on our tree that we're going to focus on. We're going to focus on adding a node to the tree, or adding really data to the tree and finding where to insert that node. We're going to focus on searching through a tree to see if a given value exists in the tree. And we're going to focus on removing a value from the tree if it's there. 
These are basically the operations that we'd perform on a set. Um, and we're going to implement each of those for our tree. So let's look at the picture of what it's like to insert something. So assuming we have a, a tree where we already have Harry, Diana, Juliet, and Tom, and we want to insert Romeo, what would we do? Well, we'd start here at the top, and we'd say, okay, let's compare Romeo to Juliet. Does Romeo come before Juliet or after Juliet? Well, Romeo comes after Juliet, so we're going to follow the right branch. All right, let's compare Romeo to Tom. Does Romeo come before Tom or does Romeo come after Tom? Romeo comes before Tom. We'll follow the left branch. If there is no left branch to follow, that's where we insert the node. Okay. So that's how we search through the tree to find the right place to insert it. Note that nothing we're doing here is going to ensure our tree is balanced. In fact, if our root is like... Zara, in terms of the example we had <coughs> excuse me, earlier, it's not going to be a very balanced tree, right? Because everything is going to be in the left, uh, left subtree. Um, but we're not, we're not concerned with that right now. So let's, walk, let's uh, write the code for actually inserting a node into our tree. Well, regardless, we're going to need to create a new node, so let's do that first. We'll create a local variable of type node called new node, and we'll say equals new node. And we'll initialize its data to the object that's passed to the add method. And just to be explicit, we'll initialize left and right to null. Now we need to find where do we put this node. Okay. The approach we're going to use here is very similar to what you all have been practicing this week with count leaves, uh, count nodes with one child. We're going to do this recursively by leveraging the node class itself. So all we need to do in the binary search tree class is just check the special case where the tree is empty. So if the tree is empty, this dot root equals null. Well, this new node is now the root of the tree. That's easy. Otherwise, we'll leave it up to the nodes to figure out where to insert this. We'll ask the root node to add the new node. So very similar approach here as to how we implemented size, count leaves, count nodes with one child. We call off to the node class itself to do this. So let's scroll down to the node class. And I already have here the method header for add node. We need to fill it in. Here I want to caution you about one thing. For me personally, when I'm trying to figure out where to insert Romeo, I like to think, okay, is Romeo less than or greater than Juliet? And if it's less than, I go left. And if it's greater than, I go right. Just conceptually, intuitively, that seems to make sense to me. And so I'm going to write the code in that same exact way, where I'm going to call the compare to method on the node we're inserting. Um, and then if the value is less than zero, we'll take the left branch. And if the value is greater than zero, we'll take the right branch. Your textbook does it the opposite way. So I'm only pointing this out so that if you're looking at the code in your textbook and it seems different, it is different. I think my way is more intuitive, so we're going to do it my way. Um, but feel free to disagree with me, for sure. So here's, here's what I mean by that. In this method, I'm going to create a local variable called diff, which is the difference between the new node that we're trying to insert and the node who we're currently examining to decide if we go left or right. So on this new node's data, I'm going to call compare to, and I'm going to pass the data of the current node we're at. Like when we get started, it would be the root. Because now I can say if diff is less than zero, 
we're going to go to the left. If we're going to the left, there's two cases. It's possible that there is no left child, in which case the new node becomes the new left child. So if left is null, the new node becomes the new left child. Otherwise, if there is a left child, that's fine. We will recursively call the add node method on that child and say, hey, left subtree, figure out where to insert this new node. I know it goes somewhere in the left subtree. We can't write an else here. We have to write else if diff is greater than zero. The reason for that is if the difference is zero, if the two nodes are equal in value in terms of their data, we want to do nothing. That's the behavior of like a set, right? You can add the same value to a set multiple times, and that's fine, nothing happens. But we certainly don't want to have duplicate nodes, duplicate data in nodes in our tree. So, so if the difference is greater than zero, this new node belongs somewhere in the right subtree. If there is no right subtree, because right is null, then the new node becomes the right child. Otherwise, we recursively ask the right child, hey, add this new node somewhere in your subtree. And that's what the add node method looks like for the node class. So now we can create a new binary search tree. We can add as many no as many as much data to that binary search tree as we want. We can add as many values to the binary search tree as we want, or elements, I guess. Um, the next thing we want to implement is actually determining, hey, does this binary search tree contain a given element? Okay. This would be like calling the contains method on a set. right? Is this element contained within the set? Is this element within our binary search tree somewhere? So let's scroll up to the top and implement the find method. The find method is really similar to the add method in terms of traversal. Um, so it, I think it's going to seem, seem familiar. So basically, we need to search through the binary search tree. So I'm going to create a local variable of type node called current. And we're going to initialize it to the root. We're going to start at the root. And we're going to keep searching as long as there's more nodes to traverse. Um, so while current is not equal to null, we'll keep searching. To start with, we're going to do the same type of comparison. We're going to compare the object we're searching for to the node we're currently at. And I'm going to store that in a variable called diff again. So we're going to take the object we're searching for, call the compare to method, and compare it to the current node's data. There are three possible outcomes. If the difference is zero, that means the data matches. We found it. We're done. Return true. Yay. Else if the difference is less than zero, then the node we're searching for, if it's anywhere, is going to be in the left subtree. So we'll set current to current.left. And then the loop will continue. So just to be clear, we're not doing this recursively. We're doing this iteratively. We have a while loop that will continue to run, and we're just changing which node we refer to. Otherwise, else, difference must be greater than zero, meaning the node we're searching for, if it's in the tree, must be in the right subtree. So we set current to current.right. If the while loop actually finishes, 
That means current equals null, which means we did not find what we're looking for. And so we return false. We certainly could have implemented find recursively, but it's, I think, fairly intuitive and, and, and more straightforward just to implement it iteratively with the while loop like we did here. Questions about inserting a new element into our binary search tree? or finding an element in our binary search tree. All right. Here's where things start to get complicated. When we try to remove an element from the tree. Let's look at the pictures. There are several different cases. This is case one. So let's say that the node we want to remove that is this node here that's in the lighter color of pink, whatever color that is, red. Um, this is pretty straightforward. This node that we want to remove, it has no children. So to remove it from our binary search tree, we simply need to know who its parent is and whether it's the left child or the right child of its parent, and in this case it's the right child, so we can just set its parent's right reference to null, and we're done. That's not too bad. This case is relatively straightforward. There's another case that's similar to this but a little bit different. Let's look at this at the same time. Here's case two. In case two, the node that we want to remove, this node here, does have a child, but it has only one child. It either has a left child or a right child. We really don't care, but it only has one child. The way we can remove this node is we, we need to determine is it its parent's left or right child. We can't simply set the, refer the right reference of its parent to null because we then lose this node as well. But based on the behavior of a binary search tree, Everything in the right subtree is greater than the parent. So whether the parent points to this node or whether the parent points to this node doesn't matter. So we'll just link the parent to the node we're removing's single child. And it doesn't matter if that child is a left child or a right child. Either way, it can be the parent's new right child. So let's write the code to handle case one and case two are actually pretty much the same. Because really, if we deal with case two and we realize that, well, maybe the single child is, is just null, then we can actually combine these two cases into the same code. And it makes our life a little bit easier. So let's do that. Let's worry about case one and case two. <coughs> All right, but before we even do that, we have to find the node to actually remove based on the element that's passed as a parameter. So we need some local variables to keep track of the stuff. We're going to have a variable to be removed, which we're going to initially set to root. Maybe that's the node to be removed. We'll continue to update this reference as we search through our binary search tree, looking for the element to be removed. In all, those two cases we just stepped through, it was really important that we knew who the parent node was because we were changing the parent node's left or right child. So we also need a local variable of type node for the parent. Finally, we need to just keep track of like, did we find the element? Um, let's assume to begin with, we did not find the element. And then we can set that to true if and when we, when we do. So the first piece of code we need to write is just to find the element in the tree. So we'll do that iteratively. While not found and to be removed is not equal to null. If we found 
the element, we're done. If to be removed is eventually set to null, that means there's no more nodes to search and the specified value isn't in this tree. In which case we're told uh, we just do nothing, which is fine. Just like a set. So let's find the difference, like we have been, between the object we're searching for and the node that to be removes data. Basically checking like, hey, is this the node that we're going to be removing? Extra parenthesis. If that difference is zero, hey, we found it. Set found to true. Otherwise, we haven't found it yet. Okay. We may need to traverse the left branch. We may need to traverse the right branch. But regardless, before we go anywhere, let's update the value of parent to refer to the node to be removed because we're about to change the value of to be removed to either the, its left or its right child. If the difference is less than zero, that means <coughs> the, object <coughs> the object we're searching for is somewhere, if anywhere, in the left subtree. So we'll set to be removed to its left child and search there. Otherwise, we'll set to be removed to its right child and search there. And if we leave that while loop and it's not found, well, then we can't remove it because it's not in the tree. We'll just return. <laughs> so assuming we found the element in our binary search tree, to be removed refers to that element, and parent refers to that element's parent node. So now we can actually focus on removing it from the tree. There are going to be more than just two cases, but we're going to focus on case one and two first. So if one of the children is empty, use the other child. This is case one and two. So let's check that. Let's see if case one or case two applies. If to be removed dot left is null, well then we definitely only have, we have at most one other child. Or if to be removed dot right is null, we have at most one other child. If they're both null, this will still be true, but that's fine. That means it's case one. But basically, this checks to make sure that it doesn't have a left child and a right child. <clears throat> Switching back to the diagram real quick just to provide some context, what we're about to do is we're about to say, hey, we know the node to be removed. We have a reference to that. We have a reference to the parent. We're going to take the nodes to be removed, either left or right child, whichever one is not null, and it's going to become the new child of the parent. It's either going to be the parent's new left child or the parent's new right child. It all depends upon if the node to be removed is the left child or the right child. So that's the code we're about to write. So let's create a local variable for the child, or the new child, I guess we could say. <clears throat> so let's check those cases. If to be removed dot left is null, then the new child
must be the right. Now, if they're both null, that means new child is going to be set to null. And that's fine. That's going to mean we're in case one. But for case two's purposes, if the left child of the node we're removing is null, we're going to use the right child instead. Otherwise, else, the new child is going to be the to be removed dot left. All right, now we have a reference to the new child. So now we just got to hook it up to the parent. There is a special case here we have to watch out for. It is possible that the parent is null meaning the node to be removed is the root of our binary search tree. So we just have to check that. So if the parent is null, meaning the node to be removed is the root of our binary search tree, well then the new child becomes the new root and we're done. Not too bad. Otherwise, the new child is either going to be the new left child or the new right child of the parent, depending on if the node to be removed is the left child or the right child. So we just have to check that. Else if parent.left equals the node to be removed, then the new left child of the parent is new child. Otherwise, it's the right child. And if we make it all the way through this, we are done. <clears throat> within this if statement. We've handled case one and we've handled case two. We've unlinked the node to be removed and we fixed it up by having the parent linked to the child. Questions at this point? All right. Well, it could be more complicated. What if the node to be removed, here's the node to be removed, what if the node to be removed has a left child and a right child. Then it's not as simple as just having the parent refer to one of the children because, well, which one do you pick and what do you do with the other subtree, right? Here's the algorithm we use. And this isn't necessarily the only algorithm. It's just the one we're going to use today. There, there are other approaches. We're going to look at, here's the node to be removed. We're going to basically find a, a different node that we can swap in for this node. Okay? And there's, there's two potential nodes that we could swap in here. The one we're going to pick is we're going to pick the least node in the right subtree. So the least node in the right subtree means that all other nodes in the right subtree are greater than that least node. So it could go here and that'd be okay. Plus, because that node's in the right subtree, we know it's greater than all the nodes in the left subtree. So again, it's fine for it to be here. So the way we search for that is we look in the right subtree, and we keep following the left child until we get to a node that has no left child. This node right here would be the least child in the right subtree. And we could take its data and store it up here to get rid, to essentially remove this node to be removed. It's a little bit more complicated than that because not only do we need to find this least child in the right subtree and move its data up to here, we have to basically unlink this node from this part of the tree and fix the link to its parents. This node, this node, and this node basically forms a case two right? Because we're in a sense removing this node and we know it won't have a left child because it's the least child in the right subtree. So it only has one child and that child can become the new left child of this node's parent. 
So it's almost like we're doing another remove operation to pull this off. So we're going to do this in a couple of couple of steps. And this is this is the last case, and this is the most complicated case. All right, so let's add a little note here just to kind of capture where we're at in this really long method. If we make it to this point, neither subtree of the node to be removed is empty. That means we're in case three. So there's a couple operations we need to do. Okay, We're going to do it step by step. The first thing we need to do is we need to look in the node to be removed's right subtree and find the least node. Okay, We're going to keep going left till we can't go left anymore and we're going to hold on to a reference to this node as well as to its parent. So let's write a loop to do that first. So we're going to find the least element of the right subtree. So we need some more local variables. We're going to keep track of the parent. The parent could be the node to be removed. It's possible the parent of the least element in the right subtree is the node to be removed if there's only one element in the or one node in the right subtree. So that's possible. We'll also create a local variable called least, which we, is going to be eventually somewhere in the right subtree. We'll start with the right child. And then we're just going to write a little loop to find the least node in the right subtree. So while least.left is not equal to null, that is while there are while there's a left subtree, meaning nodes less than the one we're currently at update all of our references. The new parent, the new least parent, becomes least. Before we update least, to refer to least.left. When this loop finishes running, least refers to the least child in the right subtree. Yay. So we're almost there. Couple more steps. Once we know that this is the least child in the right subtree and we know this is the node to be removed, Rather than trying to unlink this node and then fix all the other links up, instead we're just going to take this node's data and store it in this node. That's a lot easier way to do this. Okay? That way we don't have to worry about this node's left and right. We don't have to worry about its parents' link as well. We're just going to take this node's data and stick it in here. So that's our next step. Move the data. To be removed dot data will now equal that least node's data. We move the data. We're not quite done. So we took the data from this node and we put it up here, but now we have two nodes with the same data. That's not OK. So essentially, we need to remove this node, which falls under case, case one or two. And we can do that simply by linking its parent to this node. The only possible complication we have here, the only special case we have here, is if the node to be removed only had a right child and no other descendants in the right subtree, in which case the parent of the node whose data we just moved is the node to be removed itself. And so we basically need to set its, I guess it could also have a right branch. So we need to set the node to be removed's right child to this node's child. Okay, That's our special case. As long as 
we're somewhere off in this right subtree where we've actually traversed left at least once, then we know it's the parent's left child link that's going to now refer to this node's right child. That's the link rerouting we're doing. But we do have two cases to handle. So let's handle those two cases to get this to work. Unlink the least child. If least parent is the node to be removed, that's the special case. In that case, we know it's the node to be removed's right child that will become that least node's, that will link to the least node's right child. Otherwise, it's a more normal case where there's several nodes there. We've, got, we've at least gone left once in which case we'll say least parent dot left oops, equals least dot right. I'm going to say least parent here. I like always referring to it as the parent. There we go. And that handles case three. Questions about the remove method? Yeah. So, for example, case three, you don't have to worry about case five. Then, you know, then all you're removing is the least do, 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 do. If the node we're removing is the root. Um, if the node it. Good question. No. And, and the reason why is because we're not actually, the node we're removing, this node here, we're not actually unlinking it. We're just changing the data. So the binary search trees instance variable for the root is still going to refer to the right node. It's just that node is now going to have different data. So that's why it's not a special case. Very good question. All right, we have one more feature to add to this thing. There's a print method in here somewhere, because I want to be able to run this and actually make sure it works. So let's implement the print method, and then we can actually run this against some sample code. Um, print. We're going to implement print in a recursive way. Okay. Um, we're going to leave it up to each node to figure out how to print its left descendants, its left subtree, itself, and its right subtree. So here, I'm just going to call the private static helper method. And I'm going to pass this dot root. I'm going to tell the root to print itself. We're going to print each value on the same line. So I'm also going to print a new line here, just so that um, whatever prints next isn't on the same line. All right. So print is a recursive, a static recursive helper method, just like we had for uh, size, I think. Um, maybe not size. Anyway, so let's. what's our terminating condition? Well, if the node passed in is null, if parent is null, well, we're done. There's nothing to print. We're done printing trees. This is an interesting recursive method. And we're going to examine this in a lot more detail next week. Um, but it's neither an example of head recursion or tail recursion um, because we want to print all the elements in order. So we need to print all the elements in the left subtree first because they all come before this node. So we're going to do that. We're going to tell the left subtree to print itself. The next element that should be printed is this node's element. So we'll print this node's element. Because this node comes after 
all the elements in the left subtree and before all the elements in the right subtree. So now we'll tell the right subtree to print itself. And that's what it takes to print our entire binary search tree. So what you should be able to do now is to run the tree tester code and see if it actually works. That's a good sign, C-E-G-H-I-J. -E and if you look at the tree tester code, basically it adds a whole bunch of letters, removes different cases, testing removing a leaf, removing an element with one child, removing an element with two children, removing the root, and then printing it out. So it's really exercising all the different cases for removal. So what we just implemented is a binary search tree which basically supports, uh, we could use this for a tree set um, as a concrete implementation of the set. What we did with the print, we'll basically start class with on Monday and explore further like what are different ways we can traverse trees. That's where we're headed next. <laughs>